Hey guys, Brent Hull, Build Show, back at the French style house, right? So we're getting, getting close to finishing this one. And I thought I'd show you some more French detailings. We've got the great room mostly done. We've got the kitchen painted, a lot of great details. And the back, oh, the back has just turned out great. So come on, I wanna show you around. So one of the things that we did is we made French doors, okay? Now what does that mean? Well, um, French doors, typically the lower panel of those doors are this raised port or an over panel, what I'll call it. We also have an integrated drip edge into this, into this door. So um, if your doors are failing or not working properly, we use, you can watch my door video because I talk about drip edges quite a bit, how we save some projects because of the drip edge, believe it or not. But this door has an over panel, okay? And so there's an interior panel and then this over panel, so no water can get in down here. And then this keeps the water away from it, hits the sill and runs away. But this is a French style door, French detailing, things we actually got from French pattern books, but really makes a difference in door performance as well. So we're in the entry hall. Remember last time we were standing here looking at these moldings. This casing wasn't on here. These arched openings weren't here. So, but you're now seeing this kind of central axis and you're seeing the pool in the distance. We're gonna go look at that in a sec because it's really special. But this is a very formal entry, right? Formal sides, you've got a study on one side, you've got a dining room on another side. So that's kind of part of a more formal style house, right? In a more Parisian kind of city house that we're gonna see. Now, back here, is a second access that runs this way. And this is a hallway that runs down to the master and then down to the kitchen. So one thing that happens on a hall that isn't that wide, okay, but it's real long, sometimes you have to break up that open. You have to create a sense of rhythm. So these brackets and then these arch transoms that supports the opening, helps the opening, helps this hallway not feel as like a long, you know, walking down a tunnel, but necessarily you're moving from space to space. And this kind of arch really helps that feel. All right, so these are, we're going into the great room, but what we've got here, we've got embrasure doors, okay? What that means is, is that you can see they're, they're done with these sauce hinges. And come here and look at this. These doors actually close into and become part of a panel jam, right? And so there's no hinge, there's no, there's no stop or anything out here. These doors, We'll, we'll kind of pivot on a weird action and then you can see the back side of it is actually a panel jam, but then it closes and becomes a panel jam all the way around. So pretty cool door system here, but it's certainly a good way to create a formal atmosphere here. So one of the things that happens in a room of this scale, of this size, is you have to create materials so that you can read it so you know how big you are in this space and these beams kind of this this beam system is a way of doing that now what this is implying is is that there's a truss system here that actually goes into a vaulted attic okay but uh you're just seeing the beams here as they wrap around the room then there's this real formal panel that wraps this room a big header over top of that door but notice these moldings here notice how how deep these profiles are right this is a uh, inch and a half sitting off the wall. We've got a huge molding here. This isn't like cabinet doors and things that that don't have the depth there. These really have an incredible amount of depth so that it really feels substantial. This base, you know, sits two and a half inches off the wall, right? The, the door casings are three inches off the wall. So in a space like that, you have to increase the scale of your molding so that it doesn't feel wimpy. It doesn't feel inappropriate and the best thing is there's an historic precedent for this right there's an historic precedent for this size of moldings this type of paneling in here the other thing that's great is here is basically the way this room works out we've got a, a ginormous fireplace we've got a bar that sits here we've got a wine room back there so that closes that metal door closes onto a wine rack uh, there's great wine storage here. This will be the bar. There's a hidden room back there, more cabinets. There's a beautiful French design piece that we've got coming from the shop. So a lot of fun details in this room. It's really going to be special.
So this now has been completely transformed. Remember last time we were looking at this, these were block walls. We've actually put the stucco onto block walls. We've got our wood framing, our zip board. We've got a space of about an inch, and then we've got a halide block, and then we wire lath and put the stucco right on top of the block here. So now you're seeing this finished space. I think before we just started putting the beam ceiling in, and you saw it open. Now we've got plastering between the beams. We've got these beams that are all locking in place. Remember these things are, you know, 800, 1,000, 2,000 pounds. So it's very heavy here. We've got them locked into the wall here in the hit out block. There's a steel bracket there that's gonna hold it up. This opening, right, this, this three-part opening in these kind of Gothic arches are really a, a cool special detail that I love. Now, I will show you a mistake that we made. So in the shop drawings, when we were looking at this, and remember, all this stone block was made up of hundreds of pieces of limestone that were specially cut to create these arches. And all these arches that go along here, I mean, it took weeks and weeks to install this. But one of the things that happened in the shop drawings is we couldn't really see what this detail was, okay? This is not right, okay? This is something that was a mistake, and it didn't really show up in the details. This is what it's supposed to be, where you've got this profile coming down onto a chamfered edge. That is more gothic. That is a more proper way to do it. There isn't a real historic precedent for this detail where it returns in like this. It always would, they had water issues, right? So part of the reason for doing this was so they would hit here and water would shed away. But this is the gothic detail we were looking for. This matches the Tudor arches and these are all being replaced. So some mistakes happen, you just gotta roll with it. So now you're seeing those French doors and actually right here, what you're seeing is the inside and outside of this door, right? We've got that out, outward over panel, right? And then on the inside of this door, you see how that panel's, how that panel's made. So an inset panel with a panel mold and then that over panel. So we've got a double panel on the bottom. And if you've watched my door video, you know that's a real important detail to make sure that panels don't split, doors last longer, especially where they get heavy sun. In here, we've got these beautiful French doors all the way around, master bedroom over here. And then this probably is my favorite piece here of this, of this house, creating this alley or this lounge that comes back here. Then of course, we've got this great timbered space in here where we've got an antique mantle, French mantle with a stucco wall, but all of this is, is held within a timber frame. So what, you, what you've got here is these massive timbers, which are, you know, 14 by 14 timbers that weigh uh, just a gazillion pounds, all supporting this beautiful frame timbered ceiling, right? All oak, all quarter sawn oak, V-groove panels, and then this wonderful detail here, and it's called a half lap dovetail, so that these beams, as they come together, are locked together mechanically, okay? So there's no glue, there's nothing that holds them together, but the joinery holds that together and pulls this all together. Now, from out here, and we'll go out here in a second and look back, you've got this wonderful stone arches that go along on both sides that are capture this centerpiece, which looks out onto this pool and really captures the magic of this space. So here we are on the back, right? This is kind of one of my favorite spots. You've got these beautiful stone arches that go across and that wonderful timber piece that comes out, right? So that you're, you're juxtapose those materials, right? Uh, but the wood, is the one that kind of sticks out and it's heavy and strong. Um, I love the rafter tails. Last time we looked at how big and beefy those rafter tails were, and you can see them coming across here, across this uh, the garage. It kind of breaks up this deal. This is a house too that's been added onto over time. That's kind of grown with its age. And so part of those details and that changes kind of expresses that. We've got a great balcony gonna go up there. You see the steel post where the iron railing is gonna go in. But this is going to be a special house. You know, hopefully in a few months when the customers move in, they'll let me back in and I can show you around the finished product. Follow me on Instagram, Home Millwork Home Homes, and Facebook. We show a lot of these details throughout the week when we're breaking down these houses and looking at cool details. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.